Annie, you're doing some nectar collection here, and there are a couple ways that you uh, collect nectar. Can you explain the process? Yeah, so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to measure um, the standing crop of the nectar in this Monarda flower. Um, standing crop is just how much nectar is available in the flower at any given time. Um, so I'm using um, little teeny tiny micro pipettes, um, which using capillary action will suck the nectar out of the flower, very um, similar to how a pollinator would, um, although pollinators have um, actually some sucking force, which I don't have the benefit of here. Um, so I'm going into the flower, similar to a pollinator, down the corolla tube, um, right to those the nectaries of the flower. Um, so what I've done here is I've bagged the flower, um, which I do to keep pollinators off of it. Um, either I've tried for 24 hours or 12 hours, um, and that keeps um, the pollinators coming and stealing my nectar before I can measure it. Um, so over 12 hours or 24 hours, the nectar will build up in the flower and then I can take a measurement. Uh, the nectar quantities are very, very, very small. Um, ideally, nectar should really be measured in a lab. I've come to figure out that these field techniques are um, a good way to get a very general idea mm -hmm. of nectar availability. Um, but again, these quantities are so small mm -hmm. that really a laboratory analysis is um, a much better approach um, than these kind of rough field so this methods. Standing crop measurements, one measurement. What's the other measurement you're taking? So another measurement is looking at the secretion rate, um, which is how quickly the, the flower would reproduce nectar um, once it's been extracted by a pollinator. And that's very, very important as well because mm -hmm. um, there may be a large quantity of nectar available, but once a pollinator comes, the plant isn't reproducing. Or it might be a small quantity of nectar, but the plant um, reproduces it very quickly. And nectar um, production is largely influenced by um, other environmental variables like the temperature, the humidity, the time of day. Um, so there's a lot of um, kind of synergism going on between pollinators and flowers, just having to deal with that, the nectar, um, and sometimes pollen production as well. Now, I've read that nectar flow is typically best after there's been some period of rain followed by a drying off period and a sunny day in the morning. Mm -hmm. Is that is that generally yeah, true? Yeah, yeah okay. I think that's generally true. Okay. Um, and flowers seem to um, really vary. Some flowers will um, have a real burst of nectar production in the morning and then drop way off, and others will have a more sustained nectar production throughout the course of the day. And then another thing I'm also looking at, not just the, the quantity of the nectar, but also the quality of it. And I use a, um, a digital handheld refractorometer. Actually, this one is not digital. It's just a handheld refractorometer. Um, and this measures the sugar content of the nectar. So if I can get um, even just the teeny tiniest drop in this micro pipette and put it down here, um, it uses um, a light prism to measure the, the sugar content. And so um, uh, really the pollinators are going after that, that sugar. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, um, and can, this can happen after a rain, that there's actually a larger quantity of nectar, but it's much more diluted. Right, okay. Um, so having a higher sugar content is more advantageous mm -hmm. to the pollinator. And generally, what is the range um, of sugar content that you're seeing? Um, I actually have to use two of these refractometers. This one measures zero to 50 and the other is 50 to 100. Um, so I'm seeing um, a large range between about 10% mm -hmm. um, sugar content up to 70% is what, wow. what I'm seeing. And it seems to be more influenced by the weather conditions and mm -hmm. the time of day and mm -hmm. environmental variables than anything else. So one thing that, you know, that's coming out of this research you're doing is really an understanding that some flowers are going to be a lot more valuable mm -hmm. for nectar production mm -hmm. than others. And mm -hmm. I wonder, um, have you made any um, conclusions about pollen values also? Mm -hmm. I think um, looking at pollen is would be very, very beneficial. Um, I haven't studied pollen in this particular study. Um, the reason being is that there's not a good field method for analyzing the quality of pollen. That really has to be done in a lab. Mm -hmm. um, but with the nectar, I was able to, I can do both extraction and um, a quality mm -hmm. analysis. Although it's very rough and it's been um, a challenge to do because of the very, very small quantities. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that would definitely be a next step in this research is to look at pollen as well. To look at um, mm -hmm. how much pollen is available and also... Um, what the, the nutrition content mm -hmm. 
of the pollen is. And then to take it a step further of actually collecting the pollinators themselves and to look at what pollen they wow. are collecting. And uh, you pointed out, which a lot of gardeners don't know, is that not all flowers have nectar. So right. some are, are pollen only. Um, mm -hmm. What's what, Name a, an example of one that you've been um, researching. Yeah, so, so one plant that I have here in my plot that uh, I was actually surprised to learn only produced pollen and not nectar is the Tradescantia, the, mm -hmm. um, the spiderwort. Mm -hmm. And that gets a lot of pollinator activity, particularly first thing in the morning, and they're all going to collect the pollen, mm -hmm. which is a fatty protein, and they, they use it to, um, to provide, to kind of to build their nests and to feed their young. So really important, particularly in the early part of the uh, growing season. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. we'll take a look at that plant too. Well, show us how you do this. Okay, so I am um, taking a nectar sample here. Um, so I'm taking the, the netting off of the flower. And so this is the flower here that has been bagged. This particular flower is a little past peak. Ideally, I've been doing this right at the, the peak flower time. Uh, so these are just magnification glasses that I'm using um, because um, for one, this micropipette is very, very tiny, as you can see. Um, and these, the corollas of the flower are also very, very tiny. So these magnification glasses just help me see what I'm doing. Um, so I'm just gonna take the micropipette and slide right down the corolla tube of the flower. And I try to tip it a little bit upside down and I get as far down into the corolla as I can without damaging the, the tube here. And I just wait about 10 seconds and the microcapillary action will suck up any nectar that's down there in the bottom of the tube. And then this is a, a 0.5 microliter microcapillary tube. So based on how far the liquid fills up, um, I can get a sense as to how much um, nectar is in here, the volume of it. And then once I have a little bit of nectar, I can put it into the syringe and I grab my, my handheld refractometer and I can, as long as I have the t teeny tiniest drop here, um, as long as I have about, um, 0.2 to 0.3 microliters, that's enough to get a reading with. And I just squeeze that teeny tiny drop out here onto the prism. Close that down. Hold it up to the light and this will give me a reading as to the sugar content in that nectar. So that tells me um, the volume and the, the quality of that nectar at this moment. Um, if I wanted to do secretion rate, I would actually mark the exact flower um, that I took that reading from. I'd rebag it and I'd come back in a couple of hours and, and take that measurement again um, and see how much um, new nectar the plant has produced in that amount of time. Watch more clips of Annie White's research on pollinators and native plants on the Eco Beneficial YouTube channel. This is Kim Ironman from Eco Beneficial. Thanks for watching. For more useful gardening tips to improve our environment, please visit us at www.ecobeneficial.com.